All right, so 7th grade, this whole lesson and unit is going to be about text structure, and we're going to talk more about nonfiction pieces to start, and then we'll move into fiction before we get into our novel study. So text structure is just kind of how the text is made up, um, with the purpose and the reason why the author or author organizes it that way, so you can better understand what the author is trying to tell you. So we're going to learn a few different ones today. The first one is description. Now, description would be when your author wants to tell you um, specific details about something. So if you look at the example, uh, it says, my magic potion contains some of these enchanting ingredients, unicorn sparkles, rainbow particles, and a hair from the Easter bunny. So the author here is talking to you about what the ingredients are that are in um, the potion. Just to give you a lot of detail, maybe to help you get a mental picture of whatever the topic is that they're talking about. You want to look for words like, for example, for instance, such as, including to illustrate characteristics that will give you more information as well. You may see something like one topic and then all these details. So if my topic is about sports, I may talk to you about um, practicing the game itself, maybe umpires, and maybe like if it's professional um, sports, like what you would get paid. I want to show you this video going to talk about cereal. So that's kind of what this image is for. Whenever I give a tour of Pixar, mandatory, the first stop is the best room at Pixar. It's not our world-class theater. It's not the amazing render farm. It's not even John Lasseter's phenomenal toy collection. Nope, none of these. It's the room where we keep the cereal. Oh! Pixar has a cereal bar. Not just any cereal bar. It has the grand daddy of cereal bars. And cereal has definitely played an interesting and integral part of how we make our movies at Pixar. Cereal bar is like this big, long row of almost every kind of cereal you can imagine. It is made of high quality plexiglass with the finest decal labels. We range from grape nuts to muesli and then down to Captain Crunch, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Cocoa Puffs, all, all the childhood vices. And it does sort of give you that same glee of standing the cereal out, doesn't it? There's something magical about that. So there's people eating cereal in meetings. There are people eating cereal at their desks. There are people eating cereal in screening rooms. You even see people eating cereal on scooters. It kind of makes sense that we fuel these films with vast amount of free cereal. Makes sense. <laughs> okay, now that video talked all about cereal. I don't know about you, but I feel like a cereal bar would be pretty cool to get to choose what you want. Maybe each day it's different. Now, Pixar has this. They described each of the different cereals that they have, um, when they eat them. They didn't really talk about why they eat them. They just gave you a description of all the times that they do have them. So there's your example for that. The second type of text structure we have is cause and effect. Think about like if I, if I run down the hallway, I may trip and fall and scrape my knee. The cause of my knee being scraped was me running down the hallway. So for example, if you eat plenty of, plenty of fruits and vegetables, you won't need to visit the doctor very often. That's the old tale that parents usually tell their children. The author's just going to kind of give you events and talk about something that happened as a result of that event. So let's look at some words. You may see words like therefore, because, if this, this happened, then this happened um, as a result. Consequently, those are kind of what you should look for when you're reading something um, to find the text structure. Now, I think this video is kind of funny, so make sure you watch the whole thing and see if you can understand what is the cause and then what is the effect as well. I'm scared of littering. Not in a phobia kind of sense, but I guess it was just the way I was raised. I can probably lie and say, it's all for the goodness and well-being of Mother Nature and our beautiful planet. But nah. For me personally, I think it was just a matter of having it engraved in my head as a kid. Littering is bad. Even though I can be a total lazy slob sometimes, I just can't bring myself to litter without the intent of cleaning it up right away. Not saying I've never littered, but you know. Like, I've been eating a piece of candy and all of a sudden the wind blows the wrapper away. In a moment of panic, I'd probably make the effort to retreat. Uh, uh. 
only to throw it away in the proper place. Because I think it's literally the easiest crime to commit. And even for a measly rapper, I'm the type of person who'd probably get caught by that one cop that just needs to reach his ticket quota. Even if it means storing it in my pocket or bag for however long it takes until a waste container is available. I'll do it. One time I found a handful of wrappers in my backpack after several months because I forgot to throw them out. And it's not even just littering, but waste management in general. It's come to the point where I'm now judging my friends when I'm at their house. Hey dude, uh, where should I put this? Oh, the trash can's right behind you. But it's plastic. You don't recycle? Oh, nah. Uh, dude, where are you going? I'm not friends anymore. Oh, what? We're not friends anymore. <laughs> I'm kidding. We're still friends. But next time I come over, there better be recycling bins full of paper, cans, and various plastics. Okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, dude, sure, yeah. Don't litter! And also recycle. Okay, now that was supposed to be funny. So I think about this. What was the reasoning behind why he enjoyed or recycled as much as he did? His mom kind of grew him up that way. Raised him to recycle things, throw away things in the proper trash cans. So as a result, he recycled. And then he told his friend, like, if you don't recycle, then we can't be friends anymore. So you see the causes and then you also see the effects as a result. Similarly to cause and effect, it's going to be problem and solution. But this type of um, tech structure, you're going to see an issue at hand and then how to solve that issue. Um, usually it's in... Uh, like a short story or things like that as well. So you may see words like dilemma, if this, then that, so that, problem and solution, and to solve. Once again, very similar to cause and effect, but just a little bit different. So I'm going to play this video for you. And in this video, there was a problem going on in the school. Something happened, and some students took, um, tried to change something. They took a new role to try and change what the problem was and came up with a solution. So I want you to think about what was the problem and then how did those students solve that problem? Make your mark on the world! I think being nice is just having a positive attitude. But when you're negative, it's just gonna bring another person down. At the beginning of the year, someone got bullied. They had a sticky note on their back and said something mean. It made me frustrated. I didn't understand why someone would do that. I felt like it was a good idea to turn the event around into something positive. Why not use something the bully use? Why not use sticky notes and put nice things and fight fire with fire? We'll write things like, your smile's beautiful, have a good day, you're great. We got a group of kids together and started a no bullying campaign. It was a really long shot to get 1,500 kids involved, but after that one broken bully, everyone was ready to be involved. Principal gave the go and we all just united as a group. I was bullied and so I want to be a part of this and I want to make it stop. Today, we're going to stick sticky notes everywhere to let people know that bullying is not allowed in our school. It feels great because everyone supports you and you know that you're not alone. I know that I'm going to be taken care of and that people aren't just going to always make fun of me and then nothing's going to happen. I know I've been bullied. It's a lot better because they've done a really good job. <laughs> I feel great that I'm part of something that united the whole school. Being a leader and being part of something can make a difference. I'll never forget this experience. Go out and make someone happy. Bring them something positive to the day. Maybe they'll bring something positive back to you. Make your mark on the Okay, so our problem was that there was a bully who puts a mean note on the back of a girl. And as a result, the solution was to kind of like change that around. Let's put some positive notes out there. And a lot of those students in the school put positive messages on sticky notes throughout the building. And actually last year when I showed this video, I had a few students come up to me and they were like, can we try this here? And so um, several girls joined in and they made sticky notes. They put them on the lockers in the hallway just to kind of give that positive message for the day. That's the only positive thing that you see. At least it's something. So there was a problem and then we found a solution. This was probably the easiest to spot sequence sequence is literally the order in which something happens so first i rolled up the dough then i added sauce and cheese and pepperonis and vegetables finally i baked a pizza in the oven literally just giving you from start to finish you could probably see this in history by looking at dates you might want to look for words like then next before after finally later previously and then obviously first second third fourth etc 
If you've ever seen the movie Up, this is a super good example. Uh, I'm not going to show you the video because it is kind of lengthy, but if you want to watch it on your own, you totally can. But basically what happens is the two main characters in the movie Up, they meet when they're super, super young, when they're when they're small, and then it progresses throughout their life. So they, they're friends, then they get married. Um, she ends up having a miscarriage, so they kind of go through some trials in the relationship. And then um, she get they get old together, she ends up being in the hospital, and I'm not gonna tell you what happens if you haven't seen the movie, but you should totally watch it. But it's giving you a sequential order of their relationship, their life together, from beginning to the end. Now, the last one that I want to talk about is compare and contrast. Compare and contrast is usually easy to spot if there are two different things being discussed. So this, for this example, it says both jackets are great, but the one on the right costs $200 more. So we're still talking about jackets, but they're two different ones, look very similar. One is a little more cheaper than the other. You want to look for words like similar, different, alike in comparison, same although as well, etc. Or on the other hand, I like that one. Now, an example that I was going to show you from this video was two twin sisters. So if you have twins, a lot of things are going to be similar with them. If they're both the same um, gender, maybe they look a little bit more alike. But you also are going to have a lot of differences. Just because you're a twin does not mean you don't have any characteristics that are unique to yourself. So think about um, a twin that you know. Or there's actually some triplets that are in seventh grade as well. Think about the things that make them the same and the things that make them different. So I want to practice um, reading some examples, and I want you to try and spot out keywords that help you determine if it's going to be a description, cause and effect, problem and solution, sequential order, or compare and contrast. So remember, look for keywords here. Do you have a dog or a cat residing at your home? That means like staying with you. If the answer is yes, be sure to keep onions out of your pet's reach. Onions contain an ingredient called thiosulfate. While this ingredient is perfectly safe for humans, it is toxic to cats and dogs. Thiosulfate weakens a cat or dog's red blood cells. If your pet consumes enough onions, their red blood cells can even burst. As you can see, the accidental ingestion of onions by your dog or cat can result in worrisome consequences. So basically, this little paragraph is talking about if your dog or cat eats onions, this could happen as a result. I feel like it's pretty straightforward which one it is. Um, it's cause and effect. So the effect is that your dog or cat getting sick, but the cause was eating those onions. It's not really a problem and solution because it's not like there's an overabundance of animals eating the onions, and then you're trying to find a solution. Let's do another example. Let's face it, onions have a less than stellar reputation. However, there are a handful of instances where onions have made it into the spotlight. If you've seen any of the Shrek movies, you can probably picture the onion-shaped carriage that Shrek and Fiona use for travel. So I've seen it, so I'm literally picturing this right now. But you might also remember that Shrek tells Donkey that ogres are like onions. They've got many layers. Holes, love that book and movie, is a Newbery Award-winning book by Louis Sekar, which later became a hit movie, which also features onions. If you've ever seen the movie or read the book, basically these boys get... They run away and they're kind of lost in the desert. And the only thing that makes them survive or keep living is eating those onions when they found a stash of them. And then there's also a song called The Onion Song by Marvin Gaye. It was released in 1969 and became very, very popular. So if songs, books, and movies continue to feature onions in the popular spotlight, maybe they'll have a good reputation um, in the future and keep that because they deserve it. So you think we're talking about... Um, something that happened and then there's something that happened in results. Are we describing these onions? Is there an order of the onions? Are we comparing and contrasting onions? Or as you think there's a problem and solution? I feel like I hope you chose a description because it's describing all the different ways onions have been used in history and why they're popular and why they're not always a bad thing. Okay, let's do one more. Cutting an onion can be an extremely unpleasant experience. In fact, it's so awful it often results in the eyes that sting like bees and tears streaming down the cook's face. Have you ever wondered what causes this undesirable outcome and how you can avoid it? Slicing the onion releases sulfuric acid into the air. The sulfuric acid reacts to the moisture in a person's eyes and results in the tearful reaction. There is a simple solution to this common problem. Cut the onion under a stream of running water. This will prevent the sulfuric acid from reacting with your eye moisture. If you follow this tip, you are likely to have a positive onion cutting experience without the tears. 
That's pretty cool. I actually tried this this past weekend and it totally worked. So that was pretty exciting. Tell me about it. It's talking about you 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 cry when you cut onions, and it talked about how you can avoid that by running it under the water. So hopefully you thought it was a problem and solution because the problem is your eyes watering, and the solution is running it under water. Um, so just to review, the five text structures that we learned today were cause and effect, description, sequence, compare and contrast, and problem and solution. If you want to go through that Google Slides presentation again, you, you are more than willing and able to, and watch those videos to help give you a better understanding. And don't forget to do your exit slip as well.